Hey viewers, Matt here with Beyond the Brick, otherwise known as the BrickWiz on YouTube and Instagram. Today guys, we are going to be taking a look at some of the brand new LEGO 2019 Harry Potter sets coming up. So today we are going to be breaking down, opening, unboxing, building all five of these LEGO Harry Potter sets. Now there are actually two sets that I do not have on hand with me. Unfortunately, I could not get those here for this video, but we do have five of the seven. I have some from two different movies. On my left here, we're going to have the sets from the Goblet of Fire or the fourth movie in the Harry Potter franchise. And on the right here, we are going to have three sets from the Prisoner of Azkaban. So lots of very fun, exciting Harry Potter stuff to get into. First and foremost, I do want to give a huge thank you to my guys over at Beyond the Brick for sending me these sets to review for you guys today. Hope you do enjoy. Of course, if you do, go ahead and drop a like down below. And of course, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel for some more awesome content coming very, very soon. So without any further delay, let's just go ahead and jump on into each set. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the box itself before we go ahead and unbox and build and review. So the first set we have today, let's go ahead and take a look at set number 75945, the Expecto Patronum. This is an extremely iconic scene from the Prisoner of Azkaban, of course, with many figures included our two Dementors, Sirius Black and Harry Potter. Now, what's super great about the set, not only does come with fantastically designed trees on Lego's behalf, but it also comes with a rare, unique deer piece. It's like a transparent, but also like a glittered blue. Obviously, this is supposed to represent the Patronus that Harry Potter does cast in the movie. It comes with 121 pieces. It retails for $19.99. Now, it is also worth noting that none of these sets here are actually going to be available until July 1st here stateside. However, if you are overseas in Europe, you actually will already have access to buying these sets. On the top of the box here, we just have some more of the minifigures of of course, we have a one-to-one -one replica scale of the Sirius Black minifigure, which looks fantastic. And on the back here, we just have a couple of play features, designs, some graphics, stuff like that, and some beautiful, beautiful box art. The next set here is going to be one from the Goblet of Fire, set number 75946, the Hungarian Horntail Triwizard Challenge. This, again, likewise, is a very iconic scene from the Goblet of Fire. This is one of the many, many challenges that Harry Potter and the rest of the sort of Triwizard competitors must successfully conquer. Here we have the Hungarian Horntail. The minifigures include Cedric Diggory, Victor Crumb, Flora Delacour, and Harry Potter. Now, the Hungarian Horntail Triwizard Challenge set will be retailing for $29.99 here in the US and comes with 265 pieces. From the looks of the box art, it comes with one of the tents that is obviously shown in the movie, so fans of the movies and books will definitely notice that. Of course, aside from the four minifigures, we do have a completely brick built Hungarian Horntail, which doesn't look too big. I'm very interested to see how that sort of correctly scales. To the minifigures, of course, we have Harry Potter on his broom and the golden egg in the center. Flip over to the box on the back side here, we have some more interior decorations and just some more play features. Now, from the looks of it, we do have a couple of stickers, obviously, and some really cool details and stuff like that. On the top of the box here, we have all four minifigures and a one-to-one -one scale of Harry Potter, who looks like he's going to have mid posable legs. The next set to discuss here is going to be set number 75957, the night bus. Again, a very, very iconic scene from the Prisoner of Azkaban. In the set included, we have three minifigures. We have Stan, Sean Pike, Ernie Prang, and Harry Potter. Minifigures actually look fantastic. One of my favorite sets in terms of minifigures. Of course, it comes with the Night Bus here. It comes with 403 pieces. We'll be retailing for $39.99 in the US. The back of the box consists of some more sort of features of the bus, which actually looks very action-packed. So, of course, we'll be diving into that. It looks like the top of the bus can be completely removed, as well as the sides to reveal a couple of really cool play features for the minifigures and for anybody who will be enjoying the set. The next set to discuss today is going to be set number 75947, Hagrid's Hut, Buckbeak's Rescue, another scene from The Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, this is definitely going to be one of my favorite ones that we will be talking about today. Hagrid has always been a really iconic figure for me, especially watching Harry Potter as a kid. The hut looks absolutely fantastic. I think Lego did a great job combining different colors, but of course, we'll get into that in a little bit. The front of the box shows a light-up brick, which should be really cool. Very interested to see how that is going to be used in the set, most likely in one of the huts. The set actually includes a whole lineup of awesome minifigures. We have Rubus Hagrid, the Executive Executioner, the Minister of Magic, and then Hermione, Ron, and Harry Potter, the dynamic trio here of the actual movies. Now, this set comes with 496 pieces and will be retailing for $59.99 here in the US. You flip to the back side of the box, we have a couple more features of the set, what looks to be some really awesome interiors of Hagrid's hut. Of course, we do have the Buckbeak, which is going to be the built minifigure, which looks fantastic. Lots of really cool details inside the hut, and of course, on top of the box, we have all the minifigures and a one-to-one -one scale of the Hermione Granger minifigure, which does look like she has blue mid-posable legs. 
Phoenix. And the last set to briefly discuss about here is going to be set number 75948. We have the Hogwarts Clock Tower. Now, I can already tell this is going to be my favorite set of the entire lineup because this is one of the most memorable scenes from the Goblet of Fire. This is during the sort of celebration and I guess like the ball, if you could say. Many figures in this set are absolutely phenomenal. Here we have Madame Maxime, Albus Dumbledore, Victor Crumb, Cedric Diggory, Flora Delacour, Ron Weasley, Harry Potter, and Hermione Granger, of course, all in their extravagant ball outfits, which is definitely going to be super cool. The set comes with 922 pieces. We'll be retailing for $89.99 here in the US. We flip to the back of the box here, you can see the entire interior of the actual set itself. Lots of floors, lots of different stuff going on. We have some ice tables in the middle and just some really cool details that I'm really excited to see how they feature. And of course, some awesome play functions on the top. We just have some more minifigures and of course, the one-to-one -one scale of Albus Dumbledore. So guys, that's going to kind of wrap up a little bit of a pre-review of these sets, if you will. Obviously, we're going to go ahead, jump on into these sets. I'm very, very excited. Of course, if you guys are too, drop a like down below in the comments, but let's go ahead and get all these guys built and I'll show them to you all on this table right now. And just like that, all of these sets are built. You got all of the power of editing people. So here are all five of the sets that we did build. Probably took about maybe four or five hours to build all of these sets all together. Now on my right here, we do have the night bus. We do have the Hagrid's hut right here. In the front and foremost section here, we do have the Expecto Patronus. On the front left here, we do have the Hungarian Horntail set. And then we have the biggest set of the entire wave, the clock tower right here. So lots of stuff to get into. Of course, let's go ahead and jump right on into the review portion of today's video. Alrighty guys, so the first set we have to kick off the review portions of today's video is going to be the Expecto Patronum, again, set number 75945, ages seven and up, four minifigures. We have two Dementors on the right, Sirius Black and Harry Potter in the middle. And then I do want to also begin this part of the review for this specific set, talking about this exclusive fantastically done Patronus piece that LEGO has done. A Patronus, if you guys are not familiar with the Harry Potter lore or story, is basically the spell that sort of dispels the evil Dementors trying to suck your soul. And of course, this is the Patronus for Harry himself. This is a fantastic piece. It's like a trans clear piece, but it also has a light bluish teal color with like some glitter in the middle. I don't know what exact color this is, but it's fantastic if you are a collector of pieces or if you're a mock builder or you just want to have an exclusive part. This is definitely going to be one of the best parts to get in this entire wave of Harry Potter sets. It is all one piece except for the middle. It kind of functions like a normal horse, but obviously there are some more pieces, which actually this might even be a very unique piece of the set too, a one by two brick in the same color. So this piece right here is definitely going to make the set worth it for me. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the actual set itself. First off, We'll go ahead and briefly talk about the two Dementors. These guys we have seen multiple times in the past. We've seen them in a couple of sets in last year's wave. So nothing too crazy. Obviously, they come with their cape, their hoods, and of course, we have like little ghostly pant pieces that are going to be trans clear, sort of, to represent them flying around like evil ghosts, stuff like that. And then as far as the other minifigures go, we have a pretty standard Harry Potter minifigure. He's got mid posable tan legs, which is super cool. Comes with the wand, obviously. The dual sided face, we have a little bit of a serious one and then a little bit of a happy one there. And then some pretty standard detailing on the figure itself and then the other figure which i'm absolutely in love with is going to be the serious black minifigure who's actually in his attire from azkaban now you should be able to notice the stripes on his undergarments these are obviously supposed to represent his attire that he would be wearing in prison which obviously is the whole point of the prisoner of azkaban now the face for serious has come with a really awesome beard and of course a fantastically done hairpiece the torso printing reaches all the way from the top down to the middle of the pant legs and you guys can see the overcoat kind of underneath and you can really just see the detail lego has put in obviously to represent the fact that this character has gone through a lot since escaping the prison of Azkaban. On the back here, we just have some minor printing in the form of different holes and cutouts, obviously again, to represent him going through a lot of stuff in the recent history. Then in terms of the terrain for this set, it comes with a couple of pieces here, basically two different segments here. We have one individual tree piece, which is made up of a couple of dark brown and regular brown colors. We have some slopes, some plates, some tiles, stuff like that on top of some dark green wedges. We have a really cool four by four printed dish. This is obviously supposed to represent the Patronus spell that Harry does cast in the scene. Other than that, the tree does have some olive green leaves, which definitely adds to a cool aesthetic. And then the other part of the set is going to be connected together. Here we have like a little bit of a beachfront shorefront for the lake that Harry and Sirius are on in the movie. And then a very, very similar tree here with some similar details. Honestly, lots and lots of cool stuff packed in this very affordable set. It comes with four really cool figures. Of course, getting two Dementors is a huge plus because these Dementor figures aren't necessarily the cheapest when it comes to buying them on third-party resellers. 
colors. And of course, coming with this beautifully designed Patronus deer here. It's gonna be fantastic. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, this is a must have. Up next here, we have the Hungarian Horntail, set number 75946. This is one of my favorite challenges in the Triwizard Cup in the Goblet of Fire. But first, as always, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about these minifigures. So first off, the main event, we do have Harry Potter, of course, in his mid pulsable black legs. He's wearing his sort of Gryffindor styled outfit for this competition, which definitely looks awesome. Of course, he does come with his wand. And then he also does come with his broom. Fans of the movie will definitely recognize why Harry has his broom in in this specific set because he's going to be flying around with the dragon overall great detail on the minifigure it says potter on the back if you guys see right there so really really cool stuff up next we have the floor delacour minifigure again in her outfit to participate in this triwizard challenge here looks like a little bit of like a tan styled vest with some hints of blue which is cool and then underneath her torso and then underneath her vest on her torso looks to be a sort of beige color if you will of course we have the normal blonde hair and she also does come with a dual sided face one of impending fright and the other one's very, very confident. And then the back of the floor minifigure is really awesomely detailed. Again, some minor stuff. We have a huge insignia on her back, which I believe is going to be an exclusive one to the set, which looks fantastic. Here we have here is going to be Victor Crumb. Again, fans of the movie will notice that all four of these minifigures look as if they actually did in the movie participating in this challenge. So, of course, we have his Victor Crumb styled red sort of dragon logo in the middle of his chest. Really cool details on the front and back of the torso here, which is pretty standard. And then the last minifigure here is going to be said. Cedric Diggory, the only other participant from Hogwarts, of course, repping the Hufflepuff logo on his actual torso here. If you'll notice, Harry and Cedric also have kind of similar stuff. That is obviously because they are both from Hogwarts, if that sort of makes sense, just repping different houses. The back of the Cedric torso does have Diggory on the back, which is super cool in his hoodie. And of course, he has a double-sided face, a little bit of a smirk there, and then one of anger and like ready to combat the dragon that he has chosen. Now, before we go ahead and get on into the dragon, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this pretty simple, kind of boring tent, not gonna lie. Um, from the exterior, it looks very, very bland, very, very boring, but I guess if it's a tent, it does look kind of boring from the outside, so. But then if you look into the inside, obviously we have some more details here. Stickers on the back, six by six panels, which I'm not too happy about. You guys can see I'm not the greatest at putting stickers there, um, but I tried my best. In the left here, we do have a little bit of a bed, which is definitely for contestants to rest before they're very, very challenging competition. On the right here, it looks to be like a table. It's an area where the competitors can sort of relax, kick back, and enjoy some drinks. Now, moving on to my favorite part of this set here, we have the Hungarian horn tail. This is where the golden egg is going to be on a little bit of a platform here. Obviously, the chain is connected to the dragon because in the films, the dragon is supposed to be securely connected by a chain, but as we all know, he flies away, and this leads to a really cool chase scene throughout Hogwarts. Dragon wings are a really cool, unique piece. These pieces have actually been done before, but this is the first time we're getting them in this specific color. The dragon is mostly brick built the head is actually one solid piece and that kind of goes for the rest of the wings but everything else in the dragons going to be created by normal lego elements which i'm actually a fan of i like when lego does it mostly by lego elements of course we have the dragon spewing out fire here which is super cool if you can only imagine harry going and swinging away on his broom and the dragon sort of chasing him that's kind of what we're going for but the dragon looks fantastic it's got some great detail i'll put harry right beneath him just to give a little bit of a scale so it's not a big dragon definitely could be bigger i think if it was to be scaled correctly it would be slightly bigger but overall the set fares really well and the hungarian horntail has definitely got to be my favorite part Alrighty, and the next set we have to discuss today is going to be the night bus a set from the prisoner of azkaban set number 75957 we have three really cool minifigures and of course a super iconic scene now the stand minifigure definitely looks really great lots of detail especially the strap going from across his torso to all the really cool purple colors in his suit a really cool sort of conductor sort of styled hat which looks awesome with a red band going across the top here on the back really not anything crazy we have a couple of printed areas with some creasing stuff like that to represent some realistic stuff here but that is going to be minifigure number one here we have the driver of the actual night bus here we have ernie prang now this guy actually looks fantastic what's really cool worth noting obviously aside from his sort of like green vest we have uh, his bald head is kind of a cool piece it's just one solid piece that goes on as a normal cap in fact i wish this came more with lego sets because there are a lot of minifigures that would look really cool with a sort of bald piece like that but anyways that is going to be that for the ernie minifigure really cool really simplistic and then the last minifigure to discuss is going to be harry potter a very simple minifigure nothing too crazy it is worth noting that he does come with mid pulsable dark tan legs which is always great so 
if you're looking for play features for a smaller minifigure, this is great. His torso has a mix of the blue jacket and the lighter teal colored shirt. Also, it is worth noting that Harry Potter does come with two side faces right there, and of course, his classic hairpiece. Now, the Night Bus is definitely one of those things that Harry Potter fans will instantly recognize. No doubt why Lego has chosen to create the Night Bus. It is very, very skinny, and I thought it was going to be a little bigger, judging from the box, but it definitely looks okay here. Just for a little bit of a scale, here is the Night Bus, and here is a minifigure. So, so the size isn't necessarily the greatest. I would have loved for it to be slightly bigger, but that's okay. It looks absolutely fantastic. Now, the majority of the bus here is made up of side panels of windows and window pieces. We have glass panes, obviously, on the front. Now, what's really cool in terms of functionality about the set, a couple of things. The top can come off, revealing a really standard interior. Again, the night bus is supposed to be this sort of live-in home. Obviously, to the muggles, it seems like a normal bus. But for the magic wizards, obviously, it serves as a little bit of a temporary home. So really cool, easily removable. Obviously, just all you have to do is sort of just plop it on there, and it comes off super easy. But you can also take off the entire front top section and revealing the interior, but it is a better angle if you go ahead and fold open the door here. So inside of the night bus is revealed a pretty luxurious place, not gonna lie. If I had to live in this night bus, I would definitely not complain. I would, however, like for the driver to not be crazy, but that's besides the point. We have a really, really awesomely detailed chandelier coming from the top. In the very front section of the bus, you can see the seat. Obviously, that is where Ernie would be driving. The night bus here on the very bottom, we do have a bed, which again, like I said before, the night bus sort of serves as this sort of temporary live-in space, um, so you could obviously tuck in your favorite minifigures just like so and then there you go they are ready to ready to sleep the night away comfortably in the night bus now on the second level here just some smaller stuff we just have a chair other stuff like that it's nothing too crazy but the interior definitely looks great i think lego did a great job sort of working with the amount of space that they had the whole width of the actual bus is maybe no more than eight or ten studs um, so lego definitely maximized the amount of space they have in here but overall it's a pretty cool set again it's very small I do wish that it was slightly bigger but i'm not going to complain it has fantastic fantastic detail especially with all the minifigures. Now, obviously, in terms of minifigure placement, you're supposed to have our man Stan over here on the back somewhere, the greeting people coming on board, and obviously, we're supposed to have Ernie. So it's a little bit of a challenge getting him in here. Kind of, you have to have small, little nifty hands, but otherwise, it does work pretty well. Again, there is all your minifigure placement for the night bus. Overall, definitely a really, really cool set. Obviously, it does come on wheels, which kind of goes without saying, but it is go back and forth with it. And then we also have a front grill sticker with a license plate. Overall, a really cool set. My only gripe is that I wish it was slightly bigger, but it is definitely a great addition to the Harry Potter wave this year. Alrighty, and the next set to talk about today is going to be Hagrid's Hut, Buckbeak's Rescue, set number 75947. This is obviously going to be Hagrid's iconic hut. It comes with lots and lots of cool detail, especially jam-packed in the really, really detailed hut itself. First off, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the figures. We'll start with the man himself. We have Hagrid, who stands considerably taller than a normal minifigure. I'll just put that on the side for you guys to show. And then here is a minifigure with the mid posable leg. So definitely a minifigure that towers over most, I'd, I'd say. Now, the entire torso for the Hagrid minifigure is actually one solid piece. So here we have the uh, piece that makes up his head and his beard and his hair. Here we have just like a normal, regular flush face for Hagrid. And then the only other part of this minifigure that comes off is going to be the mid-sized legs right here. So if you just put the head on, it kind of looks funny. It looks really like disproportionate to the entire figure. But nonetheless, the detail on the front of Hagrid's, just, just the entire torso looks fantastic. We have his sort of iconic belt, his iconic coat other stuff like that that we've seen for so long no printing on the back but that's completely okay on the front here you can see we have molds of different pockets which again just kind of adds to the coolness factor of this minifigure of course again we just have the beard and the hair as one piece you just put the legs on right there and then Hagrid also does come with a little lamp here which definitely looks really really cool the next figure we'll hop into is going to be the minister of magic a very simple minifigure obviously the minister is supposed to be a very professional figure professional person coming from a little bit of a higher government so he definitely looks the part. He has a really cool top hat. Got some really nice suit printing, which actually goes down from the torso into the pant legs, which is cool. Comes with a green tie, very normal minifigure here on the back. Some very slight detailing, just some creases in his actual suit top. Overall, a very simple minifigure, but definitely one of the minifigures you have to include. So the executioner minifigure here looks really cool. It sort of reminds me of a medieval sort of era, middle ages executioner. His weapon of choice obviously is going to be the ax. His torso printing is really cool in the fact that there are no sleeves, 
which again is something accurate to the movie, which is always fantastic. You can sort of see the front of the actual torso here with the printing, which I do think looks really, really cool. Of course, the sort of black robes and black outfit. It also is worth noting that his hands are black, obviously to represent the gloves that he does wear. On the back, some very simple printing, again, to show the creases of the actual outfit he's wearing. He comes with a pretty standard hood that we've seen a lot of minifigures so far, and the actual face itself is definitely really cool. We have a little bit of a front smiley section here, and then we just have some more slight printing on the back, and that is gonna be it for the Executioner minifigure. And then the last minifigures we have here are going to be the iconic trio. On the left, we have Hermione Granger, Harry Potter in the middle, and Ron Weasley. Of course, they all come with their respective wands, obviously their respective hair pieces. The Hermione Granger actually comes with blue mid-posable legs, so if you wanna actually pose the minifigure, that's gonna be a very doable thing. Of course, on the back, she has a little bit of an angry face, which again, fans of the movie will definitely appreciate. And then in the middle here, we have a pretty standard Harry Potter minifigure, a blue sort of jacket with a little bit of a lighter teal t-shirt. For the actual torso, of course, we have some like beige tan uh, legs, which are also gonna be mid posable so you can move it around. Also does come with two faces, a little bit of a smirk right there and then a little bit of a look of anger or worry on this side. And then the last mini figure here is going to be the Ronald Weasley here. Of course, he has his red sweater, mid posable dark bluish gray legs. Now then on the back of it, he also does have a little bit of a frowny face, which is <laughs> definitely in character for Ron Weasley in Harry Potter, and then a little bit of a nervous smile face on the front. So next, let's go ahead and talk about the build. Now before we get into Hagrid's hut, let's briefly talk about this really cool little mini scene that Lego has made. If you guys are not aware, outside Hagrid's hut is going to be this sort of farm area. He grows different vegetables, pumpkins, stuff like that. Now here we do have Buckbeak for whom the set's named after. He is a griffin, which is super cool. Of course here he is chained up. We have a couple of really cool details here. We have a couple of leaves on the bottom and pumpkins to represent the exterior of Hagrid's hut. And as awful as it is to say, a really cool sort of neck piece for Buckbeak right here. It's uh, pretty poseable too, so it's very flexible. Of course, if you want to take it off, you can just take off one side of the chains and then sort of unveil it like that and he can run away, stuff like that. But this is a really cool mini area of the hut. Really appreciate Lego doing this scene from the set, I think it's super cool. But now moving on to the actual hut itself, a really, really great set. So first off, the exterior detail is a combination of different colors. We have light bluish gray, dark bluish gray, and a little bit of like the green teal color, which definitely looks great. Of course, the circular shape of the Hagrid's hut is perfectly captured here. The doors on the front are definitely worth noting. However, they are stickers. You can even see an air bubble in there, which kind of sucks. I wish Lego would go out of the way and make like a wood panel printed door, but that's nonetheless. Top panels of the roof are all movable, so you can kind of take it off really easy. They're all connected by some hinge bricks here. Of course, we have the chimney on the left and some more small details. We move around the house, we do have a six by six panel here piece that is also stickered with some moss and some bricks and stuff like that. But getting on into the inside of Hagrid's hut, we have some really cool details. In the first room here, we obviously have his really big seat for the gentle giant. We have a table in the middle with a teapot. Of course, on the top, we have a whole bunch of utility tools. We have a cleaver, we have a whip, we have a bucket, which is actually on the ground right now. We have a spoon, a pan, other stuff like that. It's also really cool that this fire actually lights up. There's a piece right up here I like to do is hammer down a little bit and of course it lights up with the lighter brick that Lego has included. So a little bit of a really cool play feature in the back we just have some more slight details and windows and stuff like that. Moving on to the other room, a very simple room, it looks more like a study area. We do have a spider on the top, a little bit of a Easter egg for all you Harry Potter fans out there. Some pretty standard stuff, we have like a candle light and a newspaper and a chest. So overall really simple inside design here for Hagrid's hut, but it is definitely movie accurate and definitely looks great. However, I do want to voice my strong, strong support of how great the exterior looks. It looks really rustic, it looks old, which is definitely something important to Hagrid's hut, being that he has been there for so long in the movie, but overall a great, great build. And the last set to go ahead and discuss for today is going to be set number 75948, the Hogwarts Clock Tower. This is not only the last set of today's video, but also is going to be the largest set in this entire new 2019 Harry Potter wave. Now this set is depicting a really, really cool castle scene from Hogwarts. And of course, it's gonna be hinting at a really iconic scene from the Goblet of Fire, which is going to be the legendary ball. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the minifigures that actually come in this set. Now we're gonna have a whole load and lineup of minifigures here. And it's Honestly, it has to be one of the most exciting sets in terms of the minifigure lineup. So first off Let's here, we're gonna talk about the Albus Dumbledore minifigure. Out of doubt, one of the most recognizable characters in Harry Potter. In this specific set for the clock tower, he is wearing his sort of ball outfit. He has a little bit of purple and white tones on his minifigure. It's really worth noting that his legs are actually going to be the dress pants, so nothing too crazy. However, there is some really, really nice back printing on the back of his dress. Oh, it's actually really interesting how this minifigure is made in terms of like the beard for Dumbledore. So first off, his whole top half comes off like this, so it is all one coherent piece. The next has got to be his head, 
And then there is a part of the actual minifigure that connects with the beard that you kind of put underneath the stump right there. So there's definitely a lot of really cool detail that goes into the Dumbledore figure for sure. Of course, like other, of course, like any other wizard, he does come with his wand, which is fantastic. And I do have to say the printing on the Dumbledore minifigure is definitely great. You guys can see all the intricate printings on the front, including his ball outfit that he wears in the Goblet of Fire. Our figure here is going to be Madame Maxine, who is definitely a unique minifigure to say the least. In Harry Potter movies and books, she is significantly significantly taller. In fact, she's even taller than Hagrid himself. So what's definitely worth noting, aside obviously from the really great detail on the minifigure, has got to be the legs. This is actually three bricks high, so it's technically a one by two by three height slope. I guess it is a two by, however, because obviously the length of a minifigure, the width of a minifigure is going to be two studs in length. The Madame Maxi minifigure does come with a double-sided face. Obviously, we have one right there and then one on the back, which looks a little bit more worried to say the least, so you can definitely swap that out. But the minifigure is great. I've actually never seen a minifigure whose legs are three bricks high so i gotta say this is definitely um, the first time i've seen something like this from a lego set but much like albus dumbledore her colors are remotely sort of purple and white which is staying consistent with the films of course some more details on the back of her dress this minifigure here is going to be the victor crumb minifigure who is one of the four contestants in the goblet of fire of course he is wearing his sort of ceremonial outfit for the actual ball itself i think lego nailed it especially in terms of accuracy here for this minifigure you guys can see the sort of pelt that is on the left shoulder or the left side of the torso, which is also really movie accurate. Of course, the torso is really nicely done. Of course, on the back, we have some more printing. Of course, you can see that fur kind of wrap around the red torso itself. The figure here is going to be Flor Delacour. Again, one of the main contestants from the Goblet of Fire. She is, of course, wearing her gown from the ball as well. She comes with her hair, a really cool printed blonde hair piece, which has come with a ponytail, which is fantastic. It also is worth noting, obviously, that her legs are a slope and not necessarily posable. See pretty well the front of her dress sort of has some like necklace going across her neck, which is fantastic of course some really cool printing i do wish that there was printing on the front of the slope onto the next figure here we are going to have cedric diggory number three i guess of the four contestants in the goblet of fire basically this look that lego has given cedric diggory is definitely going to be one of sort of a tuxedo in fact his torso is going to be very similar to harry potter very standard printing of course he comes with his wand and he does have a dual sided face, one a little bit more of an angry face, and then we have one more of a normal, normal happy face, if you will. And then moving on to the iconic three here, let's go ahead and talk about Harry Potter. Very standard minifigure here, again, is sort of a tuxedo, just in a little bit of a different fashion. He does obviously come with his wand, and he also does have a double sided face here in the back. So nothing too crazy here with the Harry Potter minifigure. Great detail for a very simple, simplistic tuxedo. The next minifigure to discuss here is going to be Hermione Granger, which has definitely got to be one of the most aesthetically pleasing minifigures here in the set she is wearing her illustrious pink outfit fans of the movie will definitely notice a lot of similarities between lego's version and the movie version she looks absolutely stunning what is worth noting however is the hair piece very very detailed which is awesome it's in like a little bit of a light brownish color for her hair but that is all one solid mold which is great now it also is unique how lego has done the legs for this figure basically it's a one by two brick and then a plate on the bottom right there you guys can see so it's not a slope um, but there also are no mid posable legs for this figure so that can kind of be a plus or a minus depending on who you're talking to and the last figure to discuss in this set is going to be the ronald weasley figure it's really cool to see the ron tuxedo outfit in lego form i definitely remember watching the movie as a kid seeing the sort of goofy outfit you can see all the incredible incredible detail on the front of his tuxedo which is definitely not normal it's more like a brownish reddish color which again if you've seen the movie is definitely going to be really cool to see minifigure form we have a very standard hair piece here double-sided face like all the other minifigures and then some really simple back printing but really cool to see the brownish legendary outfit that ron has worn the hand-me-down from the movie into minifigure form. Overall, all these minifigures are absolutely fantastic. So now with the minifigures out of the way, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the build. We'll get into the other stuff when we go to the interior of the actual clock tower. Now, first off, minifigure scale, there is an Albus Dumbledore there. So the set itself is actually a pretty tall build. It's definitely at least two dozen bricks in height, which is nice. Now, one thing I do want to point out about this model is its instant recognizability. I guess you can kind of say if you're a fan of Harry Potter, especially the way Lego has done the architecture, especially the clock tower right there, it's definitely going to be a recognizable thing if you are a fan of the series, which is definitely got to be one of my favorite parts about the entire build. Sort of reminiscent of a castle, and I guess that's honestly what Hogwarts is. It is a castle, so lots of combinations with archways and windows and stuff like that. Moving on to the actual clock itself, every piece that you see right now is going to be printed, so the entire 8x8 or 6x6 dish that you guys see for the clock tower is completely a printed piece, which is fantastic. The set also includes lots and lots of different slopes. 
so you guys can see on the very top here, just this top portion, there are quite a few of the one by two by two ten slopes. So again, lots of archways, lots of slopes. And I think that definitely came out to make a really, really nice product. Legos using a little bit more of the profile bricks, the masonry is going to be more castle wall, which I guess is definitely just to sort of make it look bigger, make it extend. Obviously there is an interior that we will get to. So in a way, Lego is definitely trying to give this sort of clock tower a little bit of consistency when it comes to maybe comparing it with the other Hogwarts castle from the last wave. So overall, Lego did a great job designing this clock tower. Like I said, instant recognizability, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the interior of the set. So actually getting to the interior is very easy, but first let's go ahead and go over the modularity between different sections. Basically there are three sections in this entire set. We have one section here, one section here, and one section here. So for sake of the review, I will go ahead and separate all of them. Very, very easy. It is, it literally takes two seconds. Of course, you can rearrange it in any sort of pattern that you want. Now I guess we'll work from top down. So the very first room up here is actually going to be like a common room here. We just have some beds and places where the people would sleep and the students would sleep and stuff like that. So pretty cool detail. I'm actually going to spin this guy right here and let me know what you guys see on the front of the tower. You could actually see the clock spin, which is fantastic. Such a really cool play feature, obviously maintaining that level of realism. Always gotta love Lego whenever they do that. But that's it for the top room. Again, sort of like a common door room for the students. Now moving down below to the second level here, we have a really, really cool classroom. This is gonna be Mad-Eye Moody or Professor Moody's classroom. Now fans of the films will definitely recognize a few things in this room. Number one, we're gonna have a little glass jar container piece here, which actually represents the part in the movie where Professor Moody Moody takes out the spider and then performs one of the really, really bad spells on the spider for lack of a better term. So that's really cool. Of course, we have some more items in the room. We, again, some more windows, which are very consistent with the entire set. Moving towards the right side of the classroom here, we just have a little bit of a desk. You guys can see we have a pen and quill over there, which definitely looks really cool. Now it actually does come with a book too, which is kind of really, really cool. It's a little bit of a brick built book, but it kind of opens up. You can see a little bit of stuff inside, which is super, super cool. So that's supposed to go right there for the professor. And let's Go ahead and move down to the very first level a very very standard room but it is the goblet of fire movie and of course you have the goblet of fire itself lego has basically used the piece that they've been using for like cups and chalices and put on a blue flame again fans of the movie will recognize this spot immediately now moving towards the right side here we have some more stuff to talk about first off let's go ahead and talk about dumbledore's chambers which is absolutely my favorite room so in the very front here we have the desk that he sits by and in the very back you can see two things on the stickers here now it actually is worth noting that i put the stickers on the wrong way that sticker is supposed to be there and that sticker is supposed to be there unfortunately but you can see here on the left we do have the his phoenix and on the right we do have the sorting hat so really cool knot of course on the top here we do have his sword which is really really cool the sword of Gryffindor now one of the most recognizable things if not the most recognizable thing from this room is gonna have to be the pensive bowl Harry Potter fans will definitely know what it's for basically Dumbledore would put in tears or other sort of materials to try and look into past events and stuff like that onto the sort of the last room I guess you could say here is gonna be a very simple sort of fountain nothing crazy um, but you can see the sort of change in scenery that we are going to we're going from the clock tower obviously towards the actual ballroom itself the spot here is also where i will put in these guys we have two we have one tree excuse me and then we have a couple of tables this is obviously supposed to represent the ballroom what's really cool about these now what's really cool about the ballroom that lego has made for the set is actually it's sort of functional if that sort of makes sense we have some four by four dishes here and of course if you wanted to have some people dancing for instance we could have maybe knock Ron out of there because he doesn't have a date in the set we'll put victor crumb right here and then of course we'll have Hermione Granger right there. And then you can imagine them dancing stuff like that. So kind of cool play features. Obviously this actual dish does spin right here and then it does spin more. So as you move the plate itself, it will spin on its own, which is super cool. We just have a normal Christmas tree on the left side here covered in some snow. And then we also have a couple of sort of ice tables also, which definitely adds to the overall scenery. So there you have it guys. There is a review of the Hogwarts clock tower. Lots of awesome, fun stuff. Now with all that being said, let's go ahead and wrap up this huge mega review of the Harry Potter sets. Thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. Hope you all enjoyed. Of course, if you did, drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Once again, guys, my name is Matt, otherwise known as the Brick Wiz. Huge thank you to Beyond the Brick for sending these guys my way. I had a fun, fun time building all of these sets, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy them. Once again, once again, all the 2019 Harry Potter sets will be released July 1st here stateside, and if you are overseas in Europe, you actually will already have the opportunity to buy these sets. Until next time, guys, this has been Matt with Beyond the Brick, and I'll see you guys later.